All right, all right, all right. We are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I hope I hope I got the video settings right for once. Let me know if there's crazy delay on the audio, and I can uh, try to work on that. But otherwise, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. And today is going to be a really fun and uh, different live stream, something I haven't done before. We're going to be doing some live sketching of rejected animals. And for those of you who only know me from Make Anything here on YouTube, uh, a little side project that I started at least a year ago, maybe just over a year ago, is uh, this Instagram page you see right here, rejected.animals. And it's basically uh, just my daily sketches and doodles that I kind of just started doing for myself as a way to get myself drawing again and to keep up that skill. It's very nice and fun and relaxing and entertaining, and I'm glad that I get to do it as a live stream today. Huge delay. All right. I feared that. Let me make an adjustment, and uh, you guys can let me know if it got... Okay, I think that'll fix it. For some reason, I, I had a delay added, because that seemed to be what was necessary, but... Now that I'm actually live, maybe it's fun. But hey, luckily, today's activities won't require much sound synchronization. We're just sketching. So as long as you can see the screen, we should be good. Um, I did just want to scroll through, give you guys an idea of what my sketches look like. Pretty much, this is, this is my drawing style. I draw black and white pen ink drawing. It's simple. Um, I mean, I love color when it's done right, but that's a whole new aspect. So when I'm, when I'm doodling, I just want to focus on the form. And I, I like to bring in shading and cross hatching and things like that to get my dimension rather than color. And it's a fun challenge. And there's no, there's nothing more poppy than black on white, right? So um, it's pretty fun to get good contrast. So let's go ahead and switch to the desk cam, shall we? Zoom. All right. OK, audio's get her. Better, better, get her. Get her better. Yeehaw. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, this is my first time doing this kind of top down desk cam setup. So <laughs> as you can see, we got my uh, DSLR cam. Well, you can't see it. I can show you guys. Well, anyways, you know my camera top-down rig that's normally in the back? Well, now it's on this desk. Ah, what am I talking about? I'm on a green screen. You guys don't know where I am. For all you know, I'm sitting on the toilet right now. Anyways, that would be a legit live stream setup. Get a green screen behind me on the toilet and then just a computer on the wall. <laughs> Um, I probably won't be making a highlight video. I'm just going to be sketching, going to be doing doodles. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's switch to that desk cam. Whoop. Uh, once again, zoom in, make sure, or actually, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. So here we are. I've got some sketches started. Some power boots, dude. This is Power Boots, dude. Hold on, let me make sure to get the focus real good. We're gonna be stuck with it for the rest of the stream. That looks pretty good. And this desk and camera rig are somewhat shaky. So there's my armpit. <laughs> yeah, excuse the shaking and all that, but hopefully we can still have fun. Um, and I, I hope I can take some requests as well. I think I'm going to start off, though, just doing some random doodles, like all of this stuff, kind of talking you guys through how I do my rejected animals. This isn't going to be a straight-up tutorial, although how about this? If you guys have a pen and paper nearby, it would be pretty fun if once I start taking requests, you guys follow along and draw your own version of the same thing. So it's not like you have to copy me, but I don't know. Let's see. Let's say we're doing a flying turtle since we got all these turtles, but 
No turtles today, I don't think. We'll see. Anyways, you draw your version, I draw my version, and then you guys can tag me on Instagram or tag at rejected.animals on Instagram. Make a story with your version of, of the rejected animal, and I'll, uh, if there's a good amount, I'll take the favorite ones and share them in the stream. Anyways, like I'm saying, when it comes to rejected animals, well, first off, most people ask how I got good at drawing, and that is purely a matter of practice, of course, like most things that people are good at. When I was in high school, I always had a sketchbook like this that I carried around with me, exactly like this, a spiral bound six by nine sketchbook. I played around with a few different sizes and this was the size that I liked. Same goes for pens, I played around with pens. I really like the Pilot G205. I know the Pilot G207 is a bit of a meme. It's like a pen meme, which I didn't know was a thing, but people are really stoked on that. And I just started using the 07 as well. It's nice for like filling in black spaces where I have a lot to fill in. But at the same time, I like drawing small. So the smaller size pen is nice for me. <laughs> so I normally take a bit of a Picasso approach where I just start drawing lines and throwing things together. As you see, uh, I don't particularly pay attention to making things line up nicely. It's fun to just throw eyes wherever you want. And, um, okay, so here are a few things that guide my sketches that are unique to me. For one thing, like I said, I always had a sketchbook like this, and I always liked filling in every little space. So a lot of the time, my creature will just depend on the space available in my sketchbook. Like this little guy, I shoved him in the corner, so that's why he's got that square shape. Simple, right? Um, other than that, you know that game where someone just draws a squiggle and then you have to start adding on to it? I kind of play that with myself. So whatever lines I draw, whether they're a mistake or not, I'm going to pretend it was on purpose and I'll adjust my drawing to make it work. And this is a technique that definitely works better if you don't have something specific that you're trying to draw which is kind of the goal with these rejected animals. I'm kind of just trying to draw whatever weird animals. That makes my job easier. Pretty much anything can be a rejected animal, as long as it's not a real animal. So I see a lot of, uh, a lot of people want toilet paper themed <laughs> art. Fair enough, it's the zeitgeist. Toilet paper times. Uh, some might say that this is the golden era of live streaming. Now that everyone's trapped indoors. Uh, I'm not saying I'll be live streaming all the time because I don't think I'm particularly good at it. <laughs> Although, hey, look, we got 200 people in the room. That's awesome. But yeah, see, I'm just drawing creatures. Uh, right now, I'm not trying to draw anything specific. I'll take requests a second. But just trying to get uh, get a little loose, you know, got to loosen up, get those lines working all right. Make sure my hand is doing what I want it to do. Wiggle lines, little wiggle lines. Oh man, wiggle lines, so good. <laughs> they just add detail to your drawings and action and motion. Let's give them some hair. I really like playing around with texture and trying to draw different textures. So when you're uh, in design school, taking early drawing classes, they'll have you just draw like a bunch of squares and then you have to fill every square with a different type of hatching or texture. So if we go back to my projected animals, there's this guy, for example, he's just made of dots. And that's the way that I separate the pants from the shirt. Even though there's no color, there's a clear separation. Kind of. There's not even a clear separation. There's no line. It's just dots. But the way that they're concentrated makes it so you know what it is. <laughs> yeah, this is a thick little doggy. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's still hard for me to, to look at the comments at the same time. So I don't think I'll be taking names for these rejected animals. If you want to name these guys, 
you got to wait until I upload it onto my Instagram, and then I let my users name them there, which is fun. Low-key, this, this uh, live stream is sponsored by Rejected Animals. Um, all right. Toilet paper. We want toilet paper monsters. So let's get started on that theme. I might draw things more than once today because I'm not used to drawing for an audience and I kind of get anxious and screw up a little bit. But usually I'm like one and done. I draw something and if it fails, then I move on and draw something else. Unless it's like a really good idea. If I've got a really good rejected animal. I'll always try to do it in one go, but of course that's not possible. So let's get a swirl going here for the toilet paper. I literally, see that's the thing about my drawing style. When I started this line, I didn't plan on ending it with a swirl. I was like, okay, I gotta make a cylinder for the toilet paper, but I kinda just let my, just let my hand lead me in a way. And the other thing is, yeah, it's hard to draw especially to like get perspective, like having that cylinder going back towards a single vanishing point. These are things that you learn when you're taking traditional drawing classes. And I had, I've taken all those classes. I took arts, I went to art school in high school. I took art classes before high school. I went to design college. So I've taken lots of drawing classes. Not to say that that's the only way to get good at drawing, but practice is, Pretty much the most foolproof way of getting good at anything. If you do something enough, it's hard to stay bad at it. <laughs> How's that? Although here, my shading's not doing too well today. I try to keep lines spaced perfectly and all that. So I like to throw in hatching like that to create some shadow. Um, this one's not particularly accurate. And this looks like it's just a roll of toilet paper. I'm not, it's not a monster yet. I don't know, just kind of playing around. But I do think it would be fun. I mean, you can already see it. He's kind of got Trump hair going, right? That kind of looks like hair and a bit of a head. So maybe we can do it like that. So yeah, today I will take more than one attempt since we're doing this for the live stream. So we'll start with the cylinder and this would be the side of the toilet paper monster's face. So maybe he's got an ear. I mean, normally there's the hole for the toilet paper, right? So we'll keep the hole. And yeah, maybe that is his ear. His ear is just the, the hole on the side of the toilet paper. <laughs> then once again, I'm just gonna copy what I did, except maybe I'll add those little like ridges, which makes it look even more like hair. See, my first intention was that this would be like the teeth right here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm off camera. I was thinking that piece of toilet paper coming off the top, those are gonna be the teeth, but now I'm thinking it's hair. All right, in the chat, we wanna see a bear combined with a bee. Did I not do that? <laughs> I've done a flying bear with like little bee wings, but I guess it wasn't technically a bee. But that, that'll be a fun one. Maybe like a bee, a bear, a bee-sized bear that goes into the honey combs and like steals honey from bees. Anyways. I'll try to keep that one in mind. <laughs> See requests for a train too. That's always hard is drawing mechanical things. All right. So my perspective's not perfect, but we're doing doodles. We're not trying to go for realism, so that's okay. Um, his eyes, I feel like they'd be hidden underneath the hair here. Let's add a perforation just to make it clear that it's toilet paper. And this also kind of adds to the perspective lines which are totally off right now, but whatever. Um, gosh, I want to give him a big, there's not much space left on this roll. Let's go ahead and just round that off. His eyes, I feel like have to be hidden. It's just going to be a, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're just going to go raw. His mouth's going to take up this whole space here. And it's even going to go, it's going to wrap around the edge of the toilet paper. How about that? It's just an open mouth like this. Ooh, maybe it opens and closes sideways. 
This is getting a little too crazy, I think. We're just crazy enough. Oh, yeah. I like that. Those little teeth coming out sideways like that. All right. Sometimes I like to make the outer edge lines a little darker and thicker. In this case, it's also a good way to hide any sloppy lines. So his mouth opens sideways, but I'm just going to have a big old nasty tongue. Big old nasty tongue reaching out. Yes, it's very important to uh, produce the sound effects while you're drawing. That's going to help with accuracy for sure. <laughs> How about this whole live stream? I just give you guys really bad advice. Uh, as long as you get the sound effects right. There's no way you can go wrong with the drawing, you know? People always think drawing has to do with what you see. It's really more about what you feel and even what you smell. So we're gonna go ahead and do some shading. Cause this is covered by the piece of toilet paper. Yeah, I mean, I can't like, I'm not gonna go into the the lessons of how to do shading and perspective and all that. That's the kind of stuff you practice, but I think one of the most uh, key things, I'm just, okay, okay, okay. Gosh, I'm rambling. The things that make my drawing style different, for one thing, like I say here, I kind of just commit to whatever line I draw because I'm trying to make clean drawings. And yeah, sometimes I scan these in to bring them into uh, Instagram. And if there's like a line, I was like, oh, it got a little too thick there. I can erase it and clean it up a little bit. But I like to keep my drawings looking original. All right. Like I was saying, we need these action lines so that you know the tongue is flailing around. And we can even add some spittle, just some drops. Absolutely flying. This guy's got no manners. What does this have to do with toilet paper? I don't know. Is it going to be a toilet themed something? Not really. It's just a roll of toilet paper right now. <laughs> Maybe this is the end result, what the coronavirus turns us into. So now I'll just, yeah, he kind of just looks like a zombie. So I kind of want to go with zombie vibes here. I'm going to give him a kind of torn up shirt. I don't know how the body connects to this. The good, the good thing is I'm not like drawing these characters for animation or anything. Some of my drawings only work from the one angle. Like if you tried to make a 3D model of one of my drawings, it probably wouldn't work. All right, people want potatoes in the chat. I mean, I probably already drew potatoes. Every time I mess up a drawing, it becomes a potato. Hands are something I was never really good at, so I don't try to make them realistic. I just go with those cartoony sausage hands. A few more action lines. And here, let's make him extra wide. His other hand is going to come out all the way to the side here. See, I was debating just completing the body here. I'm just going to make it super wide so that I can add this hand reaching. Like, rah! That'll be good. It's always good to show action. And I always have to like look at my hands to be like, okay, which side do I put the thumb on? <laughs> I still do some very uh, noob mistakes, you know? And we're just gonna make it all like, yeah, just a total distorted zombie hand. Isn't that just like the that's the zombie hand. It's just... <laughs> Wait, there we go. Action lines. Needed the action lines. It kind of is like a head crab. Yeah, I, I think I, I was a little bit in the Half-Life mindset, maybe. Still jealous of people whose computer can run the game. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, my composition too. Like, see, I just decided to make... The front of his body go there that way i could go right between i don't want to interrupt this little spittle i don't want to interrupt this little action line so i kind of just start filling up the empty space i think that's just kind of my style is to 
try to fill every empty space. Of course, empty space on its own has value. And that's a whole lesson of its own. You'll learn that in every art class, the use of negative space. Um, when it comes to black and white drawings like this, it's especially fun. With minimalistic drawings, you can really kind of take advantage of illusions and things. And like, you can draw things that wouldn't work if you had to make it more detailed, you know? Hey, I kind of like this guy. I gotta say, I don't know the story behind him, but I think that's, that's what happens when, uh, when you become a toilet paper hoarder. Maybe he'll be popping out of a pile of toilet paper. So let's just start creating a pile. And this, like, the focus of, of this doodle is definitely going to be this guy and his head. So I could even add a little bit more uh, shading and whatnot. And the more shading and detail I bring into this area, relative to the rest of the drawing, the more it creates a focal point. So people are going to get drawn to this part of the drawing first, which is the main part of the drawing. So that, that's a good rule of thumb. These toilet paper rolls here, as you can see, they're kind of just suggestions of toilet paper rolls. I might make them a little more obvious just because, well, it's part of the story. So there's another one. I do have a problem where I tend to want to add detail to every single part of the drawing. And then you get kind of lost in it, which is its own thing. It's kind of fun as well to, to make a super complex drawing that people can spend a lot of time looking at and still learning new things. And he's bursting out, right? So we'll add some more action lines, of course, wherever you can add action lines like that. And uh, yeah, so like here you can see they're kind of following the direction. They kind of create a direction that lets you know, poof, there's maybe like a roll flying out over here. in the back. <laughs> I don't know, that kind of looks like part of a different drawing, so I'll probably edit that out. I think that's pretty good. There we go. There's the suggestion of the pile of toilet paper. I'll just go ahead and draw some lines here to create some value change for the pants. And there we go. First rejected animal. Teepee monster. How's that? Okay, I'm getting... I know it's always just the same few people who uh, post their requests like crazy. <laughs> so I see Adelaide really wants a train. And that reminds me that slow chat is not on. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Oh, okay, Adelaide, you left a super chat, so I have to draw a train. And I'm seeing bear a lot, so I think let's combine the bear and the train. Bear train. There's something there. Sometimes I do the drawing and then I think of the pun afterwards. <laughs> Should I look? See, there's the other thing. Trains are hard to draw. Oftentimes, if I'm like, oh, I want to do a train based idea or something that I haven't drawn a lot, go look up a photo. You know, there's no harm in going to Google and searching an image just so you have some basic reference. But I'm not going to do that because it might be funny if I absolutely fail at drawing a train. Bear train. <laughs> so how am I gonna do a bear train? Is the bear, is it just a bear head? Is it like Thomas the Tank Engine with a bear head in the front? Or is it more? I think it should be full bear. Like bear, a train of bears, or maybe one long bear, kind of like the Totoro cat bus, you know, but a train. 
there's a lot of options always, you know. Sometimes I'll take all of those ideas and draw one of each and then decide which one I like. Or I just think of something and commit, or I start drawing, and then what happens? Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why I keep throwing this down, this is just to rest my hand on so I don't get grease on the paper. Sometimes my hands are just too sweaty or greasy, and then I'll draw something over here, and then when I come over to the another part, the pen doesn't work anymore because the paper's messed up. Super annoying. All right, we've got a little space here. Let's see if we can do a little bear train. See, I don't even know the, the real face shape of a bear. I think real bears have pretty weird faces. They've got long snouts like that. Oh, man. <laughs> this might have to turn into something else because I'm already worried. All right. That's still bear. It's still enough of a bear shape, close enough to be a bear, for sure, for sure. And we'll just go ahead, bear eyes. I have no idea what bear's eyes look like. Do they have like diamond shaped eyes or do they have big round eyes? I'm gonna go ahead and give them teddy bear eyes. All right, let me give you a pro tip right now. Here's one that anyone who draws can use. If you wanna make cute eyes just go for a big circle and uh this is like this is the classic way you draw an eye right like there it is your classic googly eye if you want a cute eye if you want to be like super cute no you don't do that first you draw a circle up here and that's going to be a reflection and then you draw another circle touching it like that like a little number eight inside and then you fill in everything else Oh, let's try to clean that up a little bit. Even if it's just tiny dots, that's fine. We just need a little reflection. Boom, turns into this big beady eye. When is this close up, it doesn't look great, but trust me, that's the way. And of course, the bigger you go, the cuter it becomes. Then I'll have another one popping out behind that. Ain't that cute? That's so adorable. Hey, Mario, thank you. Yes, go Spain, go world. We're all in this together, guys. I hope you're all staying inside. I think you are, because you're watching this live stream, so it's more than likely that you guys are staying home and staying inside and doing that physical distancing thing. So good on everyone here. I know anyone who's a fan of Make Anything is a smart person, so. All right. I drew this head way too big to like put a train behind it, I think. Okay. I'll still do a bear train because that's what was requested. No, it's not what was requested, actually. That's just what I decided I was going to do as a train based thing. <laughs> but I think I got to make this something else, something that I could fit in here. So maybe we'll make the next bear train. This one, I'm going to go ahead and it actually looks just like a capybara. I think I just drew a really good capybara, which is a capybara. Uh huh. Still fulfilling requests. There's a bear in there somewhere. <laughs> All right. So, one thing I like to do when I uh, am drawing a rejected animal or just trying to think of something, the easiest way I think is to start with something that exists, like a capybara. And you think, huh, how can I adjust that? How can I play around with the word? I can make it a happy bear. <laughs> I can make it just a cap, 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 cappy bear <laughs> with a cap. I can give it a cap. That'd be an easy way, but then it's just still a cappy bear. Oh, that gets confusing. Whoop de whoop, whoop de whoop. Thanks for the super chat. Whoop de whoop. I'm sorry, I butchered that. A crappy bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna turn him into a, a turd that'd be so sad but yeah you guys you're getting the you're getting the gist of it all right let's see crappy bear <laughs> slimy bear it's always fun making things slimy it's fun turning animals into fish also they're I love drawing fish. I would love to turn this into a fish, but I do that way too often. So I'm going to take one of your guys' suggestions. 
Cappy Bearing. <laughs> Make the other half a frog. But you gotta think of a you gotta think of a pun. Cappy frog doesn't work like that. A cabby bear. I don't know what that means. Bread monster. <laughs> Daddy bear. -a. All right. <laughs> I don't know if any of these are. Oh, a hoppy. There it is. The hoppy bear. -a. Hoppy bear. -a. Said simultaneously. Oh, that was my sister who made that request. I'll still, uh, I'll still allow it though, because I like that hoppy bear. I see it, it guides me, but it doesn't tell me exactly what I have to do. I'm gonna take this capybara and turn it into a little bit of a kangaroo rat type creature, because it's already looking cute. If I start something, a lot of the time, since I'm just drawing whatever, a lot of the time they end up looking real freaky. So if I start something and it looks like it could be cute. I'm going to try to stay on that track until I screw up. And then I'm like, okay, I'll make it some weird monster. But I'll try to make it cute. Now I'm thinking, what kind of a tail does a capybara have? I think they got a little, little puffball tail, something like that. And now the hoppy part is going to be his hind legs here. Because instead of just being little short stubby legs... Almost got cut off there. Let's give him a butt. He needs a butt. Oh yeah, that's that's a good butt. <laughs> All right. So now he's gonna have these long kangaroo legs. Oh man, see see what I said. It starts out cute. Then you start drawing the legs. Then you start. Draw the little folds behind the knee, and now you've got a freak of nature. <laughs> That's rejected animals for you folks. <laughs> and I'll have the short little front legs still. He's kind of like a... A mammalian T-Rex. Oh, I forgot capybaras have webbed toes. That's an important fact about capybaras. I guess you can't really see here whether the toes are webbed or not. Sorry guys, hard to keep the camera in, in focus. <laughs> Might have gone a little bit too extreme with the legs. He's a real hopper. I guess I caught him pre-jump. I didn't exactly get him in the mid-jump era. There we go. Um, I think I'm going to shade this guy in. He's a little freaky. He's very freaky. Um, so whenever I've got a hairy animal and I need to shade it, I like to shade it using kind of a hair-like texture, like I did with this guy over here kind of. And also when there's like a side view like this, which I do very often, I'll try to shade the leg that's further back and the arm that's further back. And that helps create some dimension as well. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'll try to be not too slow about it. This, pro this part can take a while sometimes if you're really Trying to make perfect little hatches, but we can be a little messy for today, I suppose. How many people did I scare off with this capybara? Oh, his butt! You're right, guys. I totally, like, just started the butt and then put another leg in front. So, see that? <laughs> That's one of the things that I'll erase when I scan it in. That was just a straight-up mistake, and... There we go. That's what happens when you go into a live stream. It's very rare that I'll do something silly like that. All right, 
there we go some quick hatching and then it's weird if it's just the back leg so i, I want to do some shading in the front too but i'll do it less full i'll kind of like pick a pick a side to put the shading on i tend to always have i tend to make this mistake a lot see here I kind of put the shading on the right side, which would imply that there's light coming from the left. But then if you look at the, the glare in the eyes, it's like the light is coming from the right. So I screwed up there, but it doesn't really look that bad. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going. And the eyes, they don't give too much of an indication. Maybe that's a reflection of a light that's straight in front or something, or the sun from up above. So I'll keep this shading. Usually shading wins over highlights, you know, it's more suggestive. How to be boss wants to see me take the make anything logo and make that into an animal. That'd be kind of fun. And once again, adding the shading and detail like this takes away from the cuteness a bit. It's definitely creepy. And uh, you know what? You can have some action lines too. Little dangling hands. <sighs> it was so cute. It was so cute. And then... Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> there you have it. It's the Hoppy Bear. <laughs> All right, let's look at the super chats. Make a rejected animal that can be made into a 3D model or sculpture. I mean, a lot of these could, and yeah, so with that as the constraint, what would that lead me to do? If I want to make one that would be easy to make with a 3D pen, that would mean it's kind of uh, constructed of mostly flat faces, because even if it's a 3D pen, usually you start off by drawing something flat and then building up. So maybe it would be something of uh, a low poly type thing or... Hmm. Well, maybe we can combine that request with another creature idea. A cyborg unicorn. I did do... Oh, cyborg unicorn. I was thinking cyclops. <laughs> Which gave me an idea. See, sometimes I'll just think and, and that'll give me a funny idea. So instead of a unicorn with like the long horn, what if it's... It just got a long single eye it's like a cyclops unicorn combo see so this is this is the kind of idea that ends up really freaky but i'm gonna go with it anyways so unicorn the horn would be up here what so i'll kind of still make it horn like you know but a little more rounded then i'll round it off then i'll draw in this little like uh some wrinkles <laughs> perspective there is messed up again already we'll have the ears going off to the side maybe this one's sticking up kind of like a curious dog this is terrible and anyway, now we're gonna make this an eyeball <laughs> so I'll just go to the tip here uh, I don't think my cute rule will save me here but I'll put a little eye highlight on it and then we're going to draw an iris on this one to try to make it look more like an eye. So there's the iris, you know, the, the colored part of the eye normally. And then um, you can give it some eyelashes. That'll attempt to make it look more like an eye. We can go ahead and give it some little varicose veins. That's not varicose, but some little eye veins. And this is a total failure. This is so creepy. I'm 
don't think I'm going to post this one. <laughs> Unless anyone has a strong attachment to this creature right here, I think it deserves to never be seen again. New page. <laughs> um, please, everyone, skip, skip that in the future. If, if anyone's watching this live stream, ignore that. Please don't spam the chat, y'all. All right. A box mouse. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So to go back to the, uh, the idea of something that I can make with a 3D pen, let's do a little box mouse. Like it's a mouse, but it's boxy. Actually, we're going to do it as a triangle. Because sometimes I try to break down an animal into its basic form. And I feel like a mouse, it's got the pointy nose, so it's more like a triangle. Ooh, maybe it's like a slice of cheese. Nah. See, but here's the thing. Like, sure, I started out with that idea, but now it's looking like a cool beak type thing, and I want to draw something else. And that's kind of how I roll. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep adjusting. Like, I'll just start drawing shapes like this, and from here I'll decide where I want to go. This could be a beak. This could be a, an eye. Like, this could be the eyelid. This, it could be lips. There's so many ways it could go. So this is a fun part. Do I want it to be a bird? Hmm. Thanks, Josh Walker, for the re retracted message. <laughs> I know, making a mouse that's a slice of cheese, that would make sense in, in some way. Or at least there's a, at least a relation between the two. A banana bird. Oh, I've done a banana bird, and that's one of my favorite creatures I've drawn, actually. It's so fun. Draw a face with tiny legs and big eyes. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to... You know what? These look like some good, luscious lips. So I'm going to go ahead and turn them into lips. So the way I do that... I'll start adding these like lip wrinkles, which curve to follow the contour of what the lip would be. And that starts making this look like a like it's got volume. It's another fun challenge when you're drawing something limited is to make it look 3D with just a few lines. See, like that, you already see the kind of roundness of it, even though I just added a few lines. I love that. So these are big lips, but I don't have a lot of space on top of the page. So it's going to be a squashed fella. There we go. I like this guy. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's like I'm already happy with it. I could leave it here. Let's add some shading. Following those same contours. So when I draw this, I basically like, whoops, sorry. In my brain, all these lines that I kind of started, in my brain, these are all connected and they're running along the entire thing. And now when I shade it, I just choose what parts of it I want to actually draw. Oh, it's starting to rain outside. Lovely. Ah, oh, the rain is so nice, guys. Like, it hasn't rained here in Southern California too much lately, of course. Not in a long time. It hasn't really rained in years. And it's been raining pretty consistently for the past couple of days, which I love. Uh, you know, it hasn't rained since before the whole quarantine situation, so kind of has some nostalgia to it almost like 
brings me back. Everything feels right in the rain. Is that where the saying right as rain comes from? Dude, this guy's great. Just a big old dude. And I'm just going to give him a little... A little sloppy little hairdo like that. This is where the G, G207 comes in. I can fill this in a little bit quicker. Another way I'll cover up a mistake is just by filling it in black. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's, that's the black part of this drawing. Oh, yay, it's raining more and more. I'm so excited. Uh-oh. It's telling me uh, there's some buffering going on. I apologize if that's the case. <laughs> He's a pretty good guy, right? Now, the thing is, he he begs to be large. I don't normally draw things so large, unless it's like, oh, this is going to be real good, which kind of is pretty good right now. So, uh, sorry, I'm very burpy today. Oh, man, you guys are lucky. I was, I was letting out some serious burps like two minutes before the live stream started, and I was worried. <laughs> Okay. I mean, this guy, he's got lips, but it kind of still looks like a bird, you know? I'm going to still give him wings. Like little wings that you know he wouldn't be able to fly. And then... Maybe I'll, I'll add some legs there, but just for now, I'll do that. This swing will kind of be pointing out. I think I, think I thought it was a bird because it, it's like that one uh, Pixar film of all the birds on the wire, and there's that big dumb bird that's like dragging down the wire. I think that's what I ended up drawing. That's another thing that totally happens as an artist. You'll just be drawing your own thing, not even thinking about it. And sometimes you end up accidentally ripping something off. Same way uh, musicians will unknowingly steal a song or something. There's definitely times where I'll draw something. I'm like, huh, that's a pretty cool thing I just came up with. And then I share it and people are like, hey, that's this character, or this or that. And I'm like, oh shoot, it totally is. Oops, dropped in my mouse. <laughs> Sorry, Adelaide, I totally did ditch your train. I'll get back to the bear train. You were the first super chat of the session. I must honor your request, but I also must complete this cute little dude. There we go. These are not horns. I'm just kind of trying to extend the hair. Yeah, I, I understand why people love this pen, the 07. Since it's thicker, it seems to roll a little bit smoother as well. And for a big drawing like this, it's nice. Uh, okay. I'm going to actually have the leg sticking out. So another thing, sometimes I'll be like, all right, I'm going to draw a leg and it's got to be filled in black because I want it to start here and stick out. It's going to cross over this line. So it's going to look like a mistake unless I hide it. So I can just turn it into a black leg. And I can still add a highlight or something. Oops, there you go. 
Keep doing that. Yeah, this definitely also has some Miyazaki Totoro vibes. For sure. Which is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing if it's looking like one of the masters of animation. Not saying that this is a masterpiece. <laughs> Let's see. Just like I did with that creepy unicorn eye thing, I like to create a little something like that that makes it look more like it's connected to the drawing. Some action lines there to make it look like he just kicked his foot up. It's a bit weird, but I will allow it. Add a little ruffle on the chest. All right, let's make this bear train. I gotta make a bear train. Yeah, sorry, I keep getting in the way. Let me uh, shrink myself down a little bit just to hopefully reduce. Oh no, I broke my mouse. Oh, fixed it. Broke and fixed. Ew. There we go. Hopefully that, I need to like tape my sketchbook down to the table. But there's another uh, another little concept of drawing. It really helps to like rotate the paper while you're drawing because it's a lot easier to draw straight lines like following the movement of your wrist versus trying to draw a line straight up and down. So just turn the page instead. You know? Okay, bear train. I've got plenty of room here and I'm still going to draw it kind of small so I can make a nice long bear train. And I could... Okay. I'm sorry, Adelaide. I know you straight up wanted a train, and now this train is going to be more bare than train. But I feel like it should have feet instead of wheels. I'm really bad at drawing bear heads. They always kind of end up looking wrong in the same way, but there. <laughs> Don't you dare turn into a cappy bear again. I knew I know bears have very long necks. So maybe that helps. And he's just going to be trotting. This looks nothing like a bear, okay? Looks like a mongoose. I'm never going to be able to fulfill your quest cuz I just can't Draw. <laughs> Just can't draw. That's that was my whole sentence. No. It's more like a cat, cat caterpillar. Oh, there was another one, a caterpillar that's like a cat. That's, but this is more a bear. If I gave it pointy ears, I would have been there. This is not a train. <laughs> this is what happens when you ask me to draw a train. I am an artist. <laughs> oh, Lord. Draw a thumb cat. I like that. I don't know what a thumb cat is, but it sounds fun. He does look like Cat Bus. See, I'm just drawing Totoro or Miyazaki stuff today. But if I make it long enough, it is no longer Cat Bus. It is Bear Train. Okay, I, actually, that makes a good point. I just need to add windows and other bus-like or train-like features. This guy can be a train yet. Oh, <laughs> really though? I don't know. There are his tracks. You see these? These are bear tracks. And 
we'll have it curve off into the distance into a little tunnel a bear cave if you will You guys, you guys see it? It's a bear train. You see this? <laughs> There's smoke coming out of his ears. Bear train. The Polar Express. Okay, I'll go. I'm here all day. Just kidding. I'm not here all day. I'll be here for, gosh, I don't know, maybe another hour. Are people joining the chat or leaving? We still got 200 viewers. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for supporting my terrible art. Just kidding. It's fun. We have fun. We draw things that are important. This is important. This is, this is bear train. Is anyone else out there attempting to draw a bear train? Cause then you'd know it's not easy. Um, I really hope my Drawing teachers from college aren't tuned in right now. They probably have a word or two for me. Bear train, bear train. Here's the other thing. If you work something long enough, you can make it work. I say, as I draw a complete monstrosity. Should I give it windows, like train windows? Draw little creatures inside? I think so. Even though then it's very cat bus, but you know what? I will, I will tribute Miyazaki. I'll take it as an honor. Try to be original, but at the same time, When this happens, what do you do? What do you do? You draw a bear train. Usually when I'm drawing these rejected animals, I'm not spending this much time on individual ones. I usually draw a bunch of little quick things, and if there's one that I end up really liking, then I'll go ahead and spend time on it. This guy is lucky to be alive, because I don't know if I would have committed to it. Bear train. Oh, I'm going insane on the bear train. There we go, some window reflections. Just add a few lines to suggest reflections. If it's the same in every window, then it's like, yeah. Air train. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying it until you accept that this is a bear train. Is there anyone else out there who wants to deny that this is a bear train? Come at me. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and then I go in and add that hair shading again. You work something long enough, it doesn't matter how bad it started out. Add enough detail. It's starting to kind of work, right? Am I crazy? It's a bear train. 
Thank you. Thank you for the validation. I agree. It would be so cool if you guys could like, ah, oh, I need some live stream tools. If anyone knows of like some cool live stream tools, that would be like ways that people can submit images and they'd show up live during the live stream. That would be cool. Or like live polls. I know I can go to straw poll and like give you guys a link to vote on something, but if it could actually show up on the stream, that'd be really cool. I know Twitch has things like that, but I'm trying to stay on YouTube. Kind of made a follow in here if you guys haven't noticed. Bear Train is a success. And you can't tell me otherwise. <sighs> Still doesn't look that much like a bear, but it's a bear. I mean, bear train, that's not even a pun. That's just its own thing. I could have gone with one of the other puns, Polar Express. The, the, I don't know. Uh, one small burb. I'll check out the sketches you guys do after the stream, and then I'll repost a few of them on my... Uh, Instagram story. So just tag me, tag me, tag at rejected.animals on Instagram. Share, share your versions of whatever animal is your favorite from this stream. Okay, so Bendik asked me to draw a thumb cat. Bitte, bitte, begging in German. What is a thumb cat? As in like a thumb, thumb cat? I just don't know if there's more to it than that. I'm trying to read into it. Some things aren't meant to be read into. So in that case, if I just am drawing a thumb cat, I don't know. Actually, I'm just going to give him a little, uh, little finger feet. Is that a thing that could work? It's another creepy one for sure. The thumb's bending the wrong way for one thing. Well... <laughs> I guess this is one of those that's meant to be creepy. <laughs> and if you didn't mean for it to be creepy, I don't know why you asked for a thumb cat. That's the fingernail behind it. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. The thumbs aren't even the same size. It's going to be doing that <laughs> thing where cats stretch their butts into the air. Except it's made of fingers, so it's disgusting. What's worse, this or my eyeball unicorn thing? Please vote on what is less bad. <laughs> Let's do this again.
it's creepy and I'm willing to accept that. I'm willing to commit to that. But this is not the right one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, my pen's kind of dying right now. He's got a messed up nail. Okay, this is this is just cruel because I said earlier in the stream that I can't draw hands, and now you're trying to me trying to get me to draw a thumb cat. That kind of worked though. I like the fact the paws kind of stretched out in front. The nails just got messed up. This is one of those drawings I'm gonna have to draw a few times, which is sad. I used to I used to be like, no, I'm not gonna draw something twice. I wanted my sketchbooks to look perfect, so I wouldn't even. That kind of stopped me from trying a lot of things, you know? I didn't want to make mistakes, even if it was in my sketchbook, and that was probably a bad idea. You sh the whole point of a sketchbook should be that you're willing to make mistakes. Because that's how you get better, right? If you want to get good at drawing Thumbcat, you got to work for it. I think this is it, as long as I don't run out of space. And I'm just gonna make it kind of a weird cat. I'm not, I'm clearly not going for realism here, right? Gosh, this is nightmare fuel right here. <laughs> All right, ooh, just don't mess up the thumbnail. Speaking of which, this has to be the thumbnail for the video, huh? For the live stream after the fact. A literal thumbnail. Oh my gosh, hilarious. It's Thumbcat. Nobody wants it. But it exists. Thumbcat. I have no words. I really don't. I mean, I'm used to drawing creepy stuff. But usually it's my own weird idea. Now I feel like I didn't even I didn't even come up with this. It's just this horrible thing. <laughs> it's not a, should we give it Okay. Question now. Do I give it the cute eyes or not? Is there any point? Can Thumbcat be salvaged by cuteness? I think you should have big eyes. Maybe there's some sort of hope. Nope, this is gonna be creepy. I'm actually not giving it. I'm, hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah, cat eyes. Duh. They need the diamond eyes. Woo. Diamond eyes are fun. Although I'll still give it a some glare right in the center, so it's gonna have a white dot in the center. 
like that. <laughs> he has no expression. He's just like, yep. This is what you asked for. This is what you get. And now I don't know, like, to shade it, do I give it hair texture or do I give it skin texture? Because it's a thumb cat. <laughs> I feel like you would just have a few hairs on it. Yeah, this is also one of those where if I go do too much shading, it's just going to get creepier and creepier. I'll just do a little bit of pointillization, just a little bit of shading to separate the back legs. So how many of you regret joining the live stream now that you see this? <laughs> oh man Mia yeah this is my quarantine <laughs> no actually um I mean, I've been doing rejected animals for, uh, like I said, for over a year now, and I've been drawing like this for my whole life. I just started sharing them about a year ago. Um, but totally, drawing is like a nice way to relax if I have any ideas. Sometimes I'll open up the sketchbook and just nothing comes. It happens to the best of us. But that happens rarely for me because I'm just drawing completely random things and sometimes I'll just try to draw cool abstract patterns or whatever. Just something to just something to take it easy to, you know? It's nice to not have any pressure. Like this isn't actually for anything. I'm not required to draw these guys. So I don't know what what someone would have to pay to commission a drawing like this. Actually, I do know. Apparently, it is 100 NOK, because that's what Bendik paid for me to draw a thumb cat. <sighs> well, I'm going to leave this on the screen, because I have to take a bathroom break, and this seems like the perfect time. Just soak it in, folks. Just soak it in. I'll be back in 30 seconds.
All right. Sorry, I don't know why I said 30 seconds. That's how long it takes me to wash my hands. Uh, fungus fly. All right, Mia. Fungus fly is next. I guess I'm doing requests. I can't deny a generous super chat. Fungus fly. There's a lot of different fungi. Fungi. They can look many ways. So how's it gonna look? I guess it's gonna be a mushroom. It's gotta be identifiable. Melasoraptor, I know you uh, would have a thing or two to say about fungi. But fun, fun, fungus fly, fungus fly. Interesting. Right, toadstool. Do I start with a toadstool and then turn that into a fly? In my head, there's no obvious way to con combine those two. Besides just giving it wings, of course, but that's no fun. I could give it like mushroom eyes. Hmm. This is one of those cases where I'm tempted to, to go online and look into it a little bit. Why don't we do that? I think it's an important lesson. I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't discourage a bit of research. I'll pull up the screen in a second. I just gotta make sure there's no disgusting fungus photos or something. Yeah, could have been. If I click body fungus, I'm sure the, the results will get less adorable. Look at these beautiful, this is such a classic. This is just a classic. I mean, yeah, I think I gotta go with a classic big old toadstool. Otherwise you'll never guess that it's a fungus fly, right? Although I really like these dudes, a little microscopic deadly fungus. I could definitely turn that into a fly. I mean, yeah, why not? That's the inspiration. It doesn't have to be obviously a fungus fly. This is, this is one of those inside things. You gotta know, you know if you know. All right, so in that case, that makes it, I'll be a cool little creature, regardless of whether or not it's an obvious fungus fly. So when I'm drawing with pen, I guess I don't really think about it at this point because my brain just starts going, but obviously you can't, different body parts are gonna be obscuring one another. So typically you wanna start drawing the thing that's gonna be most in front. Because if you have to draw on top of something, well, you can't erase, right? So typically try to draw what's gonna be in front first and then move backwards. I always draw. If you, you may have seen probably almost, almost every single animal I've drawn today always faces left. I feel like everyone kind of just settles into one way or another, or maybe it's something to do with your handedness. All right, let's do a quick little scientific study in the chat. Um, tell me what hand, are you left or right-handed and do you draw things facing left or right? And you might not even know. I probably should have just asked you to draw something first and then see if it ends up facing left or not, right. But if you have an idea of like what you tend to do, I'm curious if everyone uh, kind of has the same things, same tendencies, or if that's just random. But what I'm saying is this guy's gonna be facing uh, to the left and at a kind of a three quarter angle, which means the thing that's in front is the left eye. So I'll draw a left eye. Then there's like the proboscis and whatnot, which I don't actually know the anatomy of a fly well enough to draw it accurately, but I know it's got this kind of buzzy mouth thing. <laughs> that is actually the scientific term. I lied. I'm a fly scientist. This is the buzzy mouth thing. I mean, what I have seen more of than fly heads is like dragonflies because I used to photograph them in my backyard. So I think that's kind of more like a dragonfly 
eyeball structure or whatnot, but I think they're pretty similar. I think flies have these little... <laughs> Looks a little inappropriate. Anyways, let's go ahead and draw the rest of this fungus. I'm gonna make it nice and big and sausagey. And um, yeah, so on this reference I'm using, it's got all these little tiny f little hair things. I could, I could either just draw the big sausage and then add hairs, or I could kind of have the have some volume to the hairs which I think I'll do. So instead of just drawing the sausage, I need to add those hairs as I go along because I'm drawing with pen. Can't, can't go back and erase. So I'm just going to start throwing these in. How about these two in the front are kind of like antenna, like cute little ears. See, how come it's the insect that ends up looking cute? This is actually looking pretty cute, and it's a fungus fly. Who would have thought? Wacky. I actually really like this guy so far. Of course, I gotta get the wings in there. Can't forget that either. And for the wings, I guess they'll be kind of going off to the side. He's not flying right now. So they're just kind of retracted. Oh, my pen's not quite putting down the ink right. I just have to follow the same line. Oh, I forgot to follow up on the study. So we got a lot of right-handed people who draw things facing left. David Glenn is left-handed and draws facing right. Hattie says right-handed draw facing left, unless specifically wanting it to face right. Yeah, same thing. There is... All right. Some people do both. Miranda is left-handed and draws facing left. It seems like, in general, facing left is more popular for sure. I'd have to do a poll if I really wanted to know, but I'm seeing a lot of facing left. And of course, more people are right-handed, so we're going to have a better sample size for that. Right-handed facing left, but look, there's a few left-handed people who draw facing right. It's almost... I think a majority as well. So it seems like there's a definite tendency to draw animals facing in the opposite direction of your handedness. And that might just be because the pen is pointing in that direction and that's where the nose is going to go. Boop! At the front. Right? Facing in the direction of your pen. That makes sense. But interesting. It's definitely a fun little study. It's cool to... Cool to be able to just like ask you guys questions and learn things just from the people who are in the chat, right? All right, let's keep this cute little fungus flag going. So the wings are going to interrupt the uh, fuzziness a little bit, but there they are. And uh, these are the little hairs, but they also look like legs. So I have to decide whether I want the legs to look the same and kind of be ex just like longer versions or if I should have big black legs or something. We're going to have, um, well, yeah, I think the legs will be black. And that means I can do them last. And that also means I can have them coming up, like overlapping with the body, and they'll look probably a bit better. So I'll just ignore legs for now. And I'm kind of just going to draw this spiky sausage fly. I like it. And then in the back, we've got, I believe they're flagella, propulsion appendages. I'm going to kind of continue the, the body of the fly behind these wings to create an illusion of some translucency. So just kind of indicate where the body would be behind the fly. See, it kind of looks... Kind of looks kind of transparent, right? Just wouldn't do that. I will have to draw the wing texture, I think, which is scary as well. Let's start drawing all these flagella that are going to be coming out the back. Let's 
Now for these, I'm going to kind of start drawing them at different points because I want different ones to be overlapping each other. Sometimes I'll start one like that and just have it cut off, just knowing that I want another one to come in front of it and maybe wrap behind it, create that chaos that the fungus has. And I'm just going to draw and draw and keep adding them until it looks like something I'm happy with. Still raining over here, by the way, which is lovely. Where are you guys all tuning in from? It's 1.30 here in Southern California. 1.30 daytime, of course. I know for others it's late at night. And like I said, I'll rotate the page a lot, especially for something like this, where we've got all these organic lines. There's always a, an orientation where it's easiest to draw it without moving my wrist too much. And I definitely uh, tend to plant my wrist and draw with my hand, which is the opposite of what I was taught in art school. When you're doing figure drawing or something, you have to really be loose and you want to move with your whole arm, right? Opposite is true here because we want to be precise and I'm drawing pretty small. So I plant the wrist and kind of just use my fingers, which I have trained through the years just by practicing. My fingers have achieved a certain level of dexterity that I can draw the lines that my brain wants to draw. This reminds me a lot of uh, when I was in Japan, there were cicadas that would get infected by a parasite and they grew these kind of appendages coming out from the back. It was actually a lot like this. But this is a fungus fly. Well, parasite, parasitic fungus? Was it? Maybe it was a fungus. Can parasites be fung funguses? Fungi? There we go. That is something. Definitely uh, moving back into the creepier realm. It was cute for a moment, but only for so long. I'm going to kind of try to draw wing patterns here, which I also don't know too well. <laughs> I like it. Oh, we got a lot of Europeans, a lot of nighttime viewers. Yeah, it's always so tricky to decide when to do a live stream because I've got fans all over the world. I mean, definitely more in the U.S. And I know there's people who are at work, but there's also kids who uh, probably finished their homework by now. Their stay-at-home work. So I'm kind of filling the eyes in with those little cells. What are they called? Come compart, compact eyes, compact eyes. There's a name for them. Maybe that was a bit over, over detailed. All right, let's add in the legs. So these are kind of going to just come out of here and there. And he's got pretty long legs. I'm doing a lot of larger drawings for you guys today. I was expecting to do little tiny boys and here I go, getting carried away.
Compound eyes. Yeah, that's the word. Thank you. So flies, they normally have like two legs going forward and then they kind of go out to the side. So the angle here is kind of weird. I can have like the leg, the back legs usually go up and down and then these would normally go like kind of up and down here. Let's do the back ones first. And I love drawing black insect legs because I can just fill it in and go on top of everything else I just drew. And it doesn't look like a mistake yet. And these, yeah. Do flies have shorter legs? Probably. These are more like insect legs. But I guess that goes with the long flagella, fungus fly nature. And again, you see here, it's kind of uh, my pen's having trouble laying down ink. I don't even think I had my hand on there for too long, but that happens. Add some little leg hairs. And we'll do one more. This one will go up. Oh, yeah. It's just kind of a little shorter. I'm trying to create a bit of an uh, effect like it's coming forward. For shortening, as they say in the art world. Oh, yeah. I think I got too much grease or sweat on this part of the page because it's not really drawing anymore. Good thing I'm almost done. I think I'll have to move on to another page or just draw some little guys to fill in the empty space. Yeah, mustache cat, those little things at the bottom were nice legs too. It was definitely cuter. This is more accurate. I, I don't know if accuracy is something that exists when you're drawing a fungus fly. A little more, uh, I don't know. I still like this too. Whoops. <laughs> Normally when I draw, I'm like, my head is right on top of my artwork. So I have to draw a little bit differently so that you guys can Kind of, see, I know my hand's still in the way. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I like the top-down view. It's out of the way, but at the same time, I still have to be a little bit aware of it. Maybe if I do this again, I should do a kind of an angled camera view, have it on a tripod. But there's not really any way to do it. I can have it looking over my shoulder. Oh, no. says I disconnected from the internet. Are, are we still streaming? <laughs> My view of the live stream cut off, so hopefully we're still going. No. Well, I'll just keep drawing because I don't know if y'all are here with me or not. I will check back in a second. There's not really much I can do about it. Come on. Where are you? Hey. Did I disappear? I'm back now. All right. 
it continues. There we go. Let's get that sixth leg in there. Yee-haw. A little more straight than the others, but... Fungus fly. Well, I... Ooh, ooh. See, this is where it's like, oh, do I keep working on it or not? I think it does deserve a bit of shading. It's fun to uh, kind of shade it, things like all these tentacles because they're all overlapping each other. So the way I'll normally do that is just draw a little bit of hatching wherever there's an edge. So here you see the wing is on top of the tentacle, so I just add a little bit of shading around the tentacle. Right here where they're wrapping around each other, whichever one's underneath, just give it a little bit of shading here and there, just like that. And that kind of helps with the effect of them looking like they're wrapping around each other. Yeah, shading is fun. Once you have the basic drawing and just going in. I mean, I'm into like the little repetitive meditative tasks and just cross hatching a massive drawing. That's one way to it's one way to keep yourself busy for a whole day. Um, okay, a little bit of shading down here. little lines here and there oh yeah that's it's pretty epic huh fungus fly and look at that this is a very unusual sketch page for me where i just fill in a whole page with four big drawings you can kind of look through some of my old ones, except for that guy. <laughs> Sorry, that thing is hideous. Uh, these will be on my Instagram soon. You guys get a little sneak peek. You already seen all the turtles. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, you can kind of get an idea of what it actually looks like when I'm just sketching on my own. I don't really repeat ideas too often, though I'll like take the same general idea and like do two different things. Uh, the butterfly, you know, I definitely had to draw that a few different angles and see what was more fun for that. There's always something hideous on the page like that guy right there who no one was ever meant to see. <laughs> Yeah, here was my uh, unicorn, what was it called? Basically like an inverted unicorn where it's got two horns and one ear. Similar creepy level to that one-eyed thing, monstrosity I made. What happened to the croctopus? I don't even remember there being a croctopus, but I'll draw that. That seems right up my alley. Do I want to do a little one on this page while I still have space? I like to use up all the space on my page, so. The Croctopus. I'll make it small, but still want a new page just in case. I'm only taking this on because it means I get to draw more tentacles. Well, I like drawing crocodiles, too, because they got the big, long snoots. Their teeth are usually pretty far spaced apart. And they've got their eyes kind of resting near the top of their heads. And I just like to have everything facing the front, which is obviously not realistic, but it's kind of a standard cartoon trick. Sorry, let me zoom that back in for you guys. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Do I make it a long crocodile body or just go straight to the octopus? I feel like straight to the octopus would look better. Yeah, I was thinking like the long thing, it would be more of a crocodile. But sometimes you got to decide like, are you going for, well, I'm never going for accuracy. I don't know why I keep saying that. Am I going for accuracy here? Obviously not. I'm drawing a croctopus. What do you think? Well, that's a fat tentacle. <laughs> I'll draw a bit of webbing here between them. It's always hard to make the tentacles the same thickness and the same length. I've already messed up a bit here, but... And to give it eight tentacles. Oh my gosh, that was always... Whenever I was a kid, I was like, how do I fit eight tentacles onto this drawing? Of course, then I realized a lot of the time you can't even see all eight because they're hidden or behind the body or something. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, there's six already. And the other two are back there. You just can't see them, but I'll make them peek out. I might have to read revisit this one. It's a name I really like, so I want to do it justice. This guy's cute, but I think... Well, let's see. Give him some scales there. I mean, he's kind of cute. He's kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> this tentacle especially is a little a little skinny stand out. Ah, uh, Elijah says a crocodile, but on the top, there's a helicopter top with tentacles as the blade. That's like a triple. Heli helicoptopus. Ooh, I like that, though. Octopus helicopter. Helico Helico <laughs> Gotta watch out how you combine those words. <laughs> helicoptopus. That's a good word. That's a good word. I think I, sometimes I'm like, I got to draw this just to make that word refer to something. Because a helicoptopus, such a good word. Who said that? Elijah. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're moving on. I, I'm, I was considering drawing this guy again. Helicoptopus. Genius. You're a bloody genius, Elijah. I am going to finish adding my shading dots here. Let's not let's not be so hasty. Man, the one thing that's a bummer about these live streams is that I can't play my music cuz then I, you know, get copyright strikes or whatever. If I could listen to my music while doing this, I mean I can wear headphones, but that's no fun. I know Radiohead is streaming a live concert in 15 minutes. Well, not live. That's a lie. They're streaming an old concert, but live on their page. A lot of artists doing live shows, like YouTube streams, it's pretty cool. Like I said earlier in the stream, this whole coronavirus thing really could set off a new age of live streaming. Not that it hasn't been done like crazy already, but 
gosh, if everyone's actually stuck inside. I mean, as soon as as soon as it just started happening, all the stay at home calls, everyone who owned a YouTube channel started doing live streams. So I was like, shoot, I want to do a live stream. It makes sense. Except there's about 10 people who are live right now. I don't want to make people have to choose. And that's why I'm live streaming on a Thursday. I don't want to interrupt all the people who have been streaming forever on the weekends. Nah, I don't know. I just do it whenever. Okay, Croctopus. That's pretty awesome. I mean, octopus, octopi, I could definitely draw those all day. Like I said, fish, any underwater creatures are my favorite things to draw because they're basically our earthly aliens. Yeah, not perfect, but cute enough. I got to draw this helicoptopus now. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. <laughs> I love it, except drawing the blades is going to be hard. Let's start with a suggestion. There we go. I don't have a pencil, but sometimes I'll do a really quick sketch line just like that because I need to draw like the cylinder of the blades to make sure this thing will work. Let's, yeah, so once again, the blades are kind of, I'm looking at the top down-ish at kind of like a, from above, I'm looking at this animal, which means that those blades are going to be the foremost object, which means that that's what I want to draw first. Is there a specific direction that helicopter blades have to spin? I don't think so. Ah, yeah, this is just so fun. Woo! Except there's no way I'm going to make eight of these. I mean, it doesn't say octa anymore. So technically, whatever this helicoptopus is, it can have any number of tentacles. Gosh, this is one where I'd actually <laughs> kind of wish that I could start with pencil. Because getting the tentacles right... That's hard. All right. Should I start that again? I think I will. I'm going to try that one again. There's no way I'm getting eight. Well, I can... Let's see. If I draw the points like one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I say I'm connecting those. Oh my gosh, no way. It's like drawing a spiral galaxy. Ah. Oh. I love the idea, but I can't draw the tentacles. This is challenging. This is challenging. Should I just use a pencil? Should I just go against all my... All my teachings. No. <laughs> I think I just have to make the tentacles not quite curvy. Not so curvy. They can still be curvy, but maybe just like... Yeah. Um, all right. It'll be a little messy, but I think that's the only way I'll finish this. 
So if I accept it being a little bit hairy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's no way to get eight of them in there. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Helicoptopus has six tentacles because that's the average between the four rotors of a helicopter and the eight tentacles of an octopus. That is the truly valid and completely perfect explanation for why this has six tentacles. Ooh, and they turned out wonky again, but gosh. They're tentacles spinning through the air at high speeds. No, that's pretty bad. Ah, oh, I want to do it better. You know what? I'm going to change the angle. We're going to be looking at it from below. And I think I'm just going to have to draw a small, simple version of this guy. I don't know. Oh, that's too big. Well, an octopus. See, and now the bottom of the helicopter is like an octopus. Ooh. Going to the very edge of the page here. So let's see. So an octopus, they've got these valves that they breathe through. There's another one where I probably could use a reference photo. All right, I'm like losing a whole page, but I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to look up an octopus. <laughs> I really like the idea in my head, so I want to do it right. You know, I just realized this other weird thing about octopus is like, is this like their nose? Because then you look at this photo, it looks like this is the front, right? This is their brain. Of course, that's not their nose. This is the, their brain. Their eyes are here and their mouth isn't. They don't have a nose. What am I thinking? They're, in a, they're a completely different animal. But anyways, see, like, sometimes it looks like the front, and sometimes it looks like the back. And with this helicopter, I was kind of thinking of it going in the back. But no, this works. This works. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. I think, I think I can do this. I have a reference now, so I can... Well, I have a reference for an octopus. I don't have a reference for a helicoptopus. Such references will not exist until after I've created this drawing. But this is going to help a lot, I think. Mm, it's not going to help that much. Oh, gosh. I tried to sneak an eye in there. And then does it still have tentacles on top of its? Or is it just the octopus without tentacles? That's just so sad. All right. This is going to be its own creature. It's like a little butt face thing. <laughs> butt face. I don't know. I was trying to. <laughs> it's always fun to just add stick figure legs to something. There you go. No, I w see that. No, here's the point is I want it to be the front in this case. I know it's the brain, but I think I'm still going to put it in front because it's more like the cockpit of the helicopter. Does that break? Yeah, and the way they swim, look, they swim with their brain in front. 
Whoops. Look at that. When they're moving, it's in the front. So whether or not it's their brain, it is, it is octopuses. They're crazy. I was so excited about this. Do you guys remember? Remember when this was a cool idea and now I just like, I'm just whining. All right. And they got weird octopus eyes. And then they've got that valve. It's like, it's like that. Oh my gosh. They're too crazy, man. I used to be good at drawing octopi, but this is not, this is not that. Shading's not quite working. Plus, I still have to draw helicopter octopus rotors on top. I don't think switching to doing the body first is actually a good strategy. <laughs> actually, you know what? The, the tentacles just need to be going out more straight. I was just giving them way too much curve. Plus, the foreshortening is really hard. This is not the one I'm going to be going with, but let me just play around with it so I at least know what I'm doing. So there can be the helicopter part in the back like that. It's like, it's, the idea's there. <laughs> I just got to draw it. I think it's, I think I just need to do it as like a kind of a more little simplified cutesy drawing, kind of like this guy up here. See, I wasn't taking it too seriously. Now I'm thinking too much. They got the valve. They got their octopus eyes. Wow. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, I already didn't leave room for... Is this gonna be a two-pager? Just trying to get this thing working? All right, no, no. I mean, gosh, yeah, that's just like a very difficult thing to draw. Wrote is... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been this stumped in a minute. Like usually I can figure out a little like cartoony way to get away with something. The helicopterpus though, it demands respect. Like, what is going on? I mean, that's, if I put little suction cups on those things. Let's see, let's see. It's very weird how Things are just different on doing this as a live stream. Like I never would draw this over and over again so many times. I mean, now it's like way too small. The helicopter tentacles. <laughs> Look at all these attempts. Well, that's probably good. It shows you guys that it's not effortless. It takes practice. 
And even someone who's been drawing weird, creepy creatures for years and years will struggle with the helicoptopus. What do you guys think? Am I am I almost there? Should I try to nail it? Mashad says the brain is between the eyes and this thing is just where all the other organs go. That makes sense. It's basically the body of the octopus. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Let's give it another one or two goes. Just because I can't let it go. And I'll probably go back and draw it again if I still can't do it. All right. The foreshortening is really screwing with me. This would come straight forward and then It's still a little off, but it might be approaching something that I will accept. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're going to stick with the explanation for the six tentacles. <laughs> it's the combination of four helicopter rotors and eight tentacles becomes six helicoptopus rotors. And honestly, I'll probably clean this up a little bit. In Photoshop. And like here, I just want to do that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Should not have done that. Well, no, it was so wonky anyways. Look how it gets all skinny and then fat again right there. I'm getting close though. One more attempt. This is the last attempt for now. That's a good starting ellipse. It's a good start. And the center will be a little bit higher. This front one going first kind of worked for me, but not really. That's one of the weirder ones. Hey, I mean, thanks for joining the live stream, y'all. We got 230 people here, which is pretty good for any of my live streams in general. And I'm not even 3D printing stuff. So I'm pretty uh, grateful for you guys hanging out. I've got some cool 3D prints coming up soon. Some more puzzles. Messed up the tentacles again. What's new? Kind of ends up looking the same every time. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. That's not too bad. It's a little messy, but it... Oh, sorry, you can't see it. That's pretty good, right? I can clean it up a little bit. I can add some shading, but like... This is an organic creature, the helicoptopus. It's not going to be all perfectly 
perfect in space. Gosh. I'm just going to draw some little circles down there to suggest little suction cups, kind of abstract versions. Sometimes I just give up too soon, too, you know, because like, Everything looks kind of bad when you start out. Well, not everything, but oftentimes. Oftentimes, you got to work on something until it actually ends up looking good. I mean, gosh, that's especially true with my videos. When I start editing something, I'll be like, oh, gosh, this is not going to work out. Then you edit it little by little. Clean things up. Correct colors. Add sound effects. Voila. You've got entertainment. All right. So <laughs> there's uh, some propellers. Now I need to add this. It's going to be pretty uh, obstructed unless I. Hmm. There's the bivalve. And then like helicopter windows are huge. I wonder if I should give it those or just keep it as an octopus. I think I'm gonna go in between. It's gonna have those kind of rectangular eyes. That's definitely bigger than a regular octopus. Doesn't even look like an octopus at that point. But I'm gonna keep it going. This is it. <laughs> I kind of like it. Once I get the shading in there. And the weird octopus eye. Mwah. Something like that. <laughs> is that oct Is it goats that have those weird folds in their eye? I think that's goats. Goats and octopuses, octopi somehow have weirdly similar eyes in some ways. Uh, we'll just fill this in. Once we add these action lines, now we're flying. All right, you know what? It ended up very strange. It's not the super awesome creation I had imagined in my brain, but at least I've done it. It's fun, for sure. <laughs> I'm going to do a fair amount of shading here to hide all my little quirks. I know octopi have pretty rough skin, so I'll add bumps. Just add a bunch of warts and bumps all over him. It's 
So yeah, even if you're just shading with dots, even that can uh, give a sense of the texture that you want to create. So here we've got some like longer smooth dots, which kind of indicate smoothness versus a bunch of little different sized dots create a kind of bumpy texture. And octopus kind of has both. <laughs> They're like smooth and bumpy, right? So I'm kind of using both techniques for shading. And the shading will also help hide some of the construction line that I used here. So I'll just go ahead and go on top of that line with some hatching. Gosh, I have not taken that many attempts to draw something. And it still ended up looking like a first attempt, but <laughs> I'm just glad I could get the idea out there in one way or another. I had to show my appreciation for such a brilliant creature. Looks like people want me to draw hybrids of animals combined with butter. <laughs> I don't know what uh, causes a trend like that. I did draw my butterfly, but that already had butter in the name. I don't know why you want a stick of butter building itself a hat out of Legos. Now that is one of the most random ideas I've ever heard which probably means you're pretty creative. It takes creativity to be able to combine things like that. Oh uh, yeah, another question I get a lot is just like, how, how do you be creative? Gosh, that's a hard question. But I actually took a class in college, which that was kind of the point, it was like, it was called creative strategies and ideas to try different techniques that force you to be creative. So some, some things you can do are just breaking patterns are an easy way to be creative. So like, oh, to just create something, basically you just wanna create something unexpected. So with rejected animals, it's really easy, right? You take a fish and you say, oh, I'm gonna give this fish bull horns. No one expects that. There you go. It's creative. <laughs> Taking two two ideas from different realms and putting them together is a good good way too. Um, not I don't really have examples, but yeah, being creative is a weird thing. I don't think anyone knows really. There's people who study it, I'm sure, but how much of it? is just something you're born with? How much of it is a learned skill? How much of it is just like willingness to make mistakes? I think that's a big part of creativity is not being afraid to do something totally stupid. Case in point, or <laughs> where is he? Case in point, you gotta be willing to do something terribly creepy like that in order to make something kind of cool like this guy <laughs> although this guy's also kind of creepy what can you do oh dinosaur ideas are good but i'm bad at drawing dinosaurs too Jeez. i tried to draw maybe i don't know if you guys just saw it while i was flipping through or it might be on a different sketchbook i was trying to do an anti-rex like there's the t-rex and then there's the anti-rex and instead of little hands it's got big hands and that's about as far as I got with that idea, which I think is, that's enough. I probably will still draw that. If you guys want me to give it a shot right now, I can, but it might end up like this guy where I have to do several attempts because, yeah, I can draw fish. Octopus are, are another ball game, apparently.
that's pretty good. I thickened out some of these lines, maybe a little too much, but it actually does look nice to outline. Once you're done drawing to go around the border and outlining all of that to make the outline thicker, it creates a kind of cell shaded effect, which is super cool. Oh, Murphy's Law. I saw your super chat, by the way. I don't know. I don't think I can DM you in uh, on YouTube, but you can send me a message on Instagram if you want to reach out to me. But yeah, outlining everything creates a cool effect. It's a little different than what I often do, so I, I try to kind of have my drawings have a similar look and feel, but for some of these more complicated ones, it also helps me hide some of the inconsistent line work and just bring it all together. Outline everything, and then it kind of becomes really bold. You see that? It definitely looks more bold. In fact, I'll switch to the G7, and then I can just draw a single line, and that'll automatically make it thicker. Oh, that looks real good. Does the helicoptopus need landing gear? Is it above or below water right now? That's another question. I think it's below water, and I can indicate that by adding bubbles to the action lines. Just behind the action lines, throw some bubbles. Boom! It's underwater. And I'll throw some fish in there too, but for now let's go ahead and finish this guy off. Yeah, I actually really like this dark line work here. It's working for this guy. Now, as I've said, this stream is sponsored by my own Instagram page, Rejected Animals. If you're on Rejected, if you're on Instagram and you're not already following me, get out of here. Just kidding. But get in. Get in on there. Go ahead and give me a little follow. A little follow de do. Follow you. I don't get paid for it or anything, but uh, I wake up in the morning and check my followers and go, yippee! Just don't you don't you want to do that for me? Rejected dot animals on Instagram. Make anything is also on Instagram at d d d e v i n n n. Um, I will be transferring my personal Instagram. It's not a personal anymore. It's basically a make anything Instagram, even though it's still under my name, and I still follow my high school friends and things like that. It's basically become a business account, so I'll be renaming that soon enough. Instagram has kind of weird rules now about renaming. Oops. Always off the page. Good night, Jan. Oh, I like that. Elephant. Elephant ant. Elephant. Good one. Good one. Gosh, I'm sorry, guys. I, I look up and I see good suggestions, which means there's probably a ton of good suggestions I'm missing, which is sad because I want to want to get them all. Dude, hey, that works, right? That ain't half bad. Let me even this out on the bottom a bit. See, that's what I'm talking about. It didn't look great, but you do all the detail work. You add the shading and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. I'm going to make this line thick, too, because this is kind of like an overlap that we want to make it look like an overlap. Hey, I'm stoked on that. Let's give it a little, uh, a little friend. <laughs> that fish is like, what is going on? All right, let's do the elephant. 
Misty, I don't know what a scrither animal is. I don't know what that means. What's up, Geo? Sure half. <laughs> I don't like it. But no, um, what were we doing? Elephant. Elephant. All right. Another insect one. This is going to be kind of like the fungus fly, I think. But... I think I, uh, I think I can give this a shot. Elephants are another animal I'm pretty bad at drawing. Elephants are tough because you got to get the big ears, the tusks, the trunk. There's so much protruding from their faces. Which also means it's pretty obvious which parts of the elephant ant have to be elephant parts which parts are ant parts you gotta have a trunk right the defining features always have to be included with the rejected animals so we'll have the trunk i was thinking the tusks could also be like the ant pincers but i think it's maybe too late for me to do that and not have it be too much if i have too many things going on it'll just be a total mess so let's just give it regular tusks There's some, something. Boop, boop. <laughs> the eyes are kind of wonky and lopsided, and I don't know. I did a weird wrinkle thing there, but I think it'll still work. Everything gets hidden in the details. Yeah, it's another creepy one. And now the antennas also have to... antennas? No, that they're already called. That was not bad. See, elephants have enough things sticking out of their faces, and now we've got to add the things that ants have sticking out of their faces too. Wild. There we go. Antennas. I kind of want to redo it just because that eye looks so wonky, but... What have I done? <laughs> He's standing way up high on his legs. All right, I got lazy on that one. I don't know. I'm starting to think I'm, I'm drawing all of these too big and detailed. Some of them I've got to try to just do little tiny more simplified versions of, which people tend to like more anyways, or at least they're cuter, right? If you do a little, little thing with little dot eyes, once you start drawing a thorax, it's hard to be cute. Oh, what a cute little thorax. Oh. No, one, no one's ever said that. That's not true, actually. It's been said. <laughs> Whew. Well, you know, the ears are the other big part of the elephant, which I totally just left out, but you got to got to make these decisions, you know, can't have it all. An animal made of discarded 3D prints. Well, that's an idea animal made of discarded 3d prints 
Hmm. I'm trying to think what I can do with that. Yeah, I really like doing black, just block in shading sometimes. I don't do it too often because it wastes all my ink, but the contrast is so nice. You can create some really dramatic shading by just going straight black and white like that. I think I'm going to try it. Yeah, I'm going to do this one, and then I'll do like a little cutesy version as well and see which one I like more. That's about as far as I can take that. The trunk's kind of wonky. But it is what it is. LF ain't. Oh, yeah, that's so close to being there, but the face is pretty wonky, which is, of course, the rejected animal part. Of course, I can draw a decent ants, but make it... I think the eyes have to be larger. Let's do a little tiny version. Well, not tiny, but simplified. Does this look simplified? Of course not. I'm doing the same thing again. Ah, oh, and then the tusks. The horn, the tusks, and the trunk. I think elephants got greedy there. They should have had to choose one or the other, you know? You're going to take the elephants and you can take the, the trunk and the tusks. Like, leave some cool body parts for the rest of those animals. Gosh. Oh, this turned out way better already. I forgot the antennas again, but this is going to be the one. Well, it's, it's very similar, actually. I wonder if I should just combine them. I can take this head and put it onto that body in Photoshop or something. I'm doing a lot of these today where it's like, it's so close. I don't know. Maybe I'm just judging myself more closely than when I draw by myself. I'll probably revisit these. Or just, I probably won't revisit them. I'll just look at it tomorrow and be like, oh yeah, that wasn't so bad. That's totally worth sharing or whatever. Okay, one small burb says, bread monster with bread legs and an angler style bread lure. Bread glur. <laughs> or a reverse giraffe with a tiny neck and massive legs. I did do a tiny giraffe. Although it, or no, I did a compact giraffe. But giraffes have long legs, so it was short legs and short arms. Let me see if I can find it. I didn't, I never put it on because I think it just looked too much. Didn't didn't fit my style or something. I don't know. I ended up not sharing it. There it is. A little compact giraffe. <laughs> it's pretty good. I should probably redo that one someday. Yeah, this did not go simpler than the last one, but I like it. I like that look. It's like a real weird way to combine the two. It's kind of just like a 
plate of I just ant ice strapped on. I don't know. I'm going to look up an ant. <laughs> I didn't know where their antennas come from exactly. Oh, wow. See, this I not I totally forgot that their antennas come out from like in front of their eyes. You see that? It's like right like like right here. If I was an ant, my antennas would be right here. You'd think they're right here? No. Nope. Wild. And there's like a little dot like there's a hole in the top of their head. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Poor ant. Okay, so that means the antennas would normally come up and over here, but that's going to overlap with my... <sighs> oh, I never wrote the name for this guy, which was my whole reason for making him. Helicoptopus. Octo. Helicoptopus. I have to think about that one. Imagine if there's a spelling bee for made up words. <laughs> That's all I'll say, because that idea is clearly not going anywhere. All right. So, once again, I'm going to make do with the space I have. And that's where the antennas are going to end, because that's how much room I have. A little bit stubby, but it works. This one's more in the foreground, so I'll make it a little thicker. <laughs> I really, I mean, I could just take this into Photoshop, stick this head on that body, and I think it's more or less done. Although I've never done that level of manipulation. So why would I start now? I don't know. It can go either way. It's like, yeah, I drew them both, but... Still not the drawing. I'll start adding some shading here. If I ever start to feel like it's not coming together, I just gotta start adding some shading because that makes everything look better. I don't know, actually. That's a little wonky. Dude, this illustration of an ant, it's like buff. This is the buffest looking ant I've ever seen. Oh, uh, you know what? I am going to redraw the body because I got to bring more elephant into it. I forgot. And I can totally do that with the feet. This elephant have dope feet. All right. See, now I'm learning a little more about ants. That should have been going backwards. See, now I'm looking at the reference drawing, which is going to affect things. See, these sections, they all go backwards, but I drew it the wrong way. I drew it more like this guy. Or no, even that goes backwards, and then it goes forward. So I messed up, but it's a fictional character. It doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah, get those thick elephant legs. Well, let's have these go backwards at least. We'll do the other legs correctly. Wow. Insects are so cool. Structure's just wild. Hmm. All right. 
Now, yeah, the legs are tough because they're all so long and gangly that they tend to overlap each other, which is why a reference really helps here. Because I can kind of think about which ones to draw in what order. Although even here, I'm not quite sure. I'm kind of just going to go like that. And then this one goes up. These are their big hind legs that go whoop. Like that. These ones kind of go backwards, but not as high up. These ones are kind of like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> you know, woo, woo, woo. Oh no. The reference I'm drawing is facing right, so of course I still get things wrong. A kangaroo, rhino kangaroo. That's an interesting one. I like kangaroo, sounds cool. Doesn't sound that much like rhino, but depending on how I draw it, of course, that would get the point across. All right, I messed up these legs a little bit in terms of anatomy, but um, you know what? I'm sorry, ant scientists. I'm gonna keep these little like elements that they have but make them get really fat so that's going to turn into the elephant feet which i draw exactly the same way as i draw my turtle feet <laughs> pretty epic pretty epic If I was just trying to monetize this idea, it would be Epic Animals. EpicAnimals.com Just kidding. I'll keep the dramatic shading going. It works really well for this. And this one will kind of be stepping up. Maybe we can even, well, I'm wondering if we would see the bottom of its foot, but I don't quite think so. It'd be pretty much just a straight on. More giant drawings. These are all like <laughs> pretty big for how, for the way that I tend to draw things. And now like the ants legs would technically go all the way back here off the freaking page, but I gotta be careful. So I'm gonna do the back leg first. Well, no, this one will go out more. This one will go down and behind. Oh, he's got a planet. And I'm getting, I'm getting so confused with the segments. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> Um, so if I was to do more live streams, how are you guys liking this? Should I do more rejected animals live streams or should I do 3D printing Fusion 360? I don't know. I don't know if it's a different crowd here hanging out today. If it's just like artist crowd versus 3D printing people crowd. Because I have a few other fun ideas for live streams that I want to try out, but this is also pretty cool. Oh, I should have had the back leg go in front. Well, not necessarily. Could go behind. It'll be a little crowded, but... Yeah, I think that's best. 
to have this leg going straight down here, ending right about there. Thanks, David. Yeah, I'm glad you're appreciating this stuff, guys. Honestly, like I said, I, I try to post a rejected animal every day. I haven't posted one today because I'm, I'm doing this. But um, that doesn't mean I draw one animal every day and then go scan it in and post it. It's a lot more efficient for me to sit down for a day and draw a bunch of animals like this. And then I have at least animals for the next week or two of course like i said i normally draw a lot more little tiny ones as well because this is pretty time consuming if i drew all my animals this intense i don't think i'd be able to get one out per day while still doing my youtube channel and everything else that i do but boy is this a pretty cool one It's really satisfying to be able to draw something cool that like doesn't exist. I can like enjoy my own art, which is nice. I don't know if everyone can do that. Definitely like musicians have trouble with that sometimes. Like if you have to go on tour and play your song every night, you're going to end up hating it oftentimes, I guess. But like when I draw this, it's as new to me as it is to you guys. <laughs> Even if it's coming out of my brain, it's I'm still not sure how it'll look on paper until it's done. So it's pretty cool. Especially when I take the time to do something really detailed and crazy like this guy. Thanks for the ideas, by the way, everyone. I think all of these ideas have been pretty fun. Another reason to do the live stream, A, is to just get more animals done because I'm running low on my backlog. Two is you guys have fun ideas. And I get to take them. Yeah, actually, shoot, I'm, I feel bad that I like haven't taken note of everyone. Usually on the Instagram page, I'll give credit to people who name the animals, but this is more like determining the animal. This is not just the name. This is the actual what the animal is. I haven't done this yet. And I'll probably just take credit for it. <laughs> All right, see, now we got to get two more feet going down behind these because insects have so many fingers. Ooh, the clock roach. That's a cool one, too. I guess it's an insect day. I love drawing insects, so I'm not complaining. All right, these legs, are. I'm just going to do as silhouettes because otherwise it's gonna get way too crowded looking. So instead of drawing each segment, I'll kind of just outline it as one thing and then I'm gonna shade that in at the end of this. It'll help reduce some of the clutter of having a very large, impressive creature like this. And then, yeah, like, I don't even have to really draw the other leg and stuff back here. It's all so jumbled together that it becomes hard. But, yeah, there we go. That's the basic form. I really wish I could make the antennas long. That's a silly thing to bother me, but should have made a... Should have known by now that my drawings are being big today.
a platypus, a moss mosquito. I like that moss mosquito. All right, now it's time to shade. And I am gonna take a little bit of my sweet time here because this one came out pretty cool and I don't wanna mess it up. So yeah, for shading here, the background shading, I could still have the shading itself kind of follow the contours of what the legs are actually doing and still give it some form like that. So it doesn't have to look completely flat, even though I am taking out a lot of the detail. A lot of people ask how to hatch cleanly. Not that I'm doing the cleanest job right now, but I have got enough practice that I can do a pretty good job of having even enough spacing where it, whoops, <laughs> spoke too soon. Um, yeah, if you have even en enough spacing, it kind of, your brain treats it like one solid color almost, or like a certain value. So here I'm creating like a 50% gray in some ways by doing it half black and half white, right? If you squinted or if your vision's bad enough, that'll just look gray. And our brains work in mysterious ways and they can do a pretty good job of completing the picture which is why I, I actually really enjoy doing minimal drawings, quite the opposite of what I'm doing here. Because it's fun, because sometimes I'll make characters that are so minimal that there's a dot, it's just a dot, and you're like, oh, that suggests an eye, or it could be the nose, or it could just be a mole. I like, I like drawing things so vague that different people looking at it might be seeing entirely different things. In this case, that's an elephant, and there's no doubt about it. But yeah, I hope you guys follow Instagram, my page, if you're on Instagram. And if you suggested any of these animals, please uh, feel free to shout out in the comments like, hey, that was my idea because I'm not going to remember. Just being real with you. All right, so there's a lot of shading here that can happen, right? And then I'm probably still going to do some dark line stuff like I did up here. All right, all righty. <laughs> all right, Taft, you really want that kangaroo. <laughs> Rhino kangaroo. Gosh, I'm going to have to think about that. I don't, can't remember last time I drew a rhino. But also, you know what? According to the laws of time and space, I'm running out of time for this live stream. <laughs> so I'm going to have to write down some of these ideas so that I can have a go at them the next time around. But it has been fun and I've... Uh, having you guys here while I'm drawing these has definitely given me the motivation that I needed to do some of these. I probably would have given up on the helicoptopus or just settled with one of the worst versions, but now that I have an, a live audience, I'm like, all right, I gotta do, gotta do decent work here. Dude, I like it. I'm debating whether I want to actually go in and shade the whole butt, but it actually, I really like just how it kind of stands out and how it's pulling focus towards the front here because it's so simple. 
Maybe I just want to add some darker areas here at the front. Playing with value is always super fun. Yeah, there's just so much to think about already doing black and white drawings. The, like the, the idea of doing like it in color, whew, it's intense. Although, I mean, I could always come to these drawings that I've already finished and then add a color. That wouldn't be so difficult, and I bet a lot of people would like that. Color is something that people tend to enjoy. Huh. Almost, almost. I almost feel like the shading has to be a little messier. Don't ants sometimes have like hairs on the top of their head and back like that, like little tiny hairs? I think they do. So maybe that'll be my little bit of detail that I add to the butt here. Yeah. All right, now I'm just gonna go ahead and outline it with the G7 again, because that did a good job here. With these more detailed ones that have a lot of shading, I think it's a good idea to make them stand out and look more bold. A caterpillar. Oh, I like that. Here, guys, I'm going to write a list of some of the... I have to write down some of the ideas you guys have given me because uh, there's too many. Well, okay. How about this? I'm going to finish the elephant. Then I'm going to take a few minutes and ask you guys to shout out all your ideas, all your favorite ideas that you had. I'll write those down so that I can visit them sometime in the future. But not right now. For now, let me finish outlining this. I need Natalie to come back. If Nat Natalie, if you're watching this, I need you. I need you to read comments to me so I can draw and interact at the same time. I think live streaming is really a two two person job at least. But again, I'm so glad that you guys are sticking around and like chilling even though I'm not spouting off stuff nonstop. I'm sure uh you guys are doing your own thing. Maybe some of you are drawing with me. Some of you are not paying attention at all. <laughs> and for those of you who are just intently paying attention and hanging out, I appreciate that so much too. I've still got a long day of work ahead of me today, so otherwise I would keep this stream going all day, but I've got sanding to do. Got some woodworking projects back in the mix. Wood, 3D printing. I'm doing it all right now. And printing masks. Just because it's quarantine doesn't mean it's lazy time. Not for me. Nice. Yeah, the outlines make it pop so much more. It definitely gives it a different look. I feel like it looks more like a comic book style almost. Like the I used to have old books, old cartoon books, how to draw aliens and stuff like that. And a lot of the them would end up looking like this where they got the thick outline. I'm not really into comics too much. But I guess that is a thing, right? I really was only ever into Calvin and Hobbes back when I was a youngster. But DC, Marvel? No, didn't get into any of that. I guess it was too violent for me to get my hands on. The 
parents would not allow it. Well, the pen's kind of dying again because I guess my hands are just too sweaty. How silly is that? I need one of those drawing gloves. I used to have one. I don't know what happened. It came with my Wacom tablet. Special little glove so that you can draw without greasing things up and All right. I guess I should outline these background ones too, even though they're just shadows. Once again, rotating the paper a lot. It's a lot easier than just trying to draw everything as is. All right, there we go. Elephant. I'll rewrite the name since it was a little messy. That was a little messy again. What can I do? I'm just a little bit messy. Elephant. Super cool. All right, I'll do a little bit of shading on the thorax. Just the most subtle. Oh, and this leg going in front needs a thicker line too. It's a good way of showing overlap. Having the thick line there separates the leg from the body. Separates everything a little bit better. I guess that's the whole point of that technique. Pretty cool, huh? And of course, got to have some spit and action lines. <laughs> I don't know if this guy actually needs action lines, but yeah, I'm stoked on that guy. All right. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it. So for the last two to five minutes that we have on this stream. Go ahead and leave. Okay, Taft, okay. You've done enough Super Chats. I'll do the kangaroo and then we'll be done for the day. <laughs> Fair enough. I think I gotta rotate the page, but this one's gonna be small. So I'm still, I will look up a kangaroo. Let's do it, let's do it proper. Get the reference photos. I should probably look up a rhino while I'm at it, even though it'll mostly just be the horns. Dude, freak. Kangaroos should have been rejected in the first place. <laughs> look at those beasts. They literally like stand on their tails so that they can do a double leg kick. That's Disturbing, and yet pretty epic. So in this case, if it was a rhino, I mean, normally they headbutt, but kangaroos go backwards, rhinos go forward. What does the kangaroo do? Um, I will start a new page. Because the kangaroo, I, I really want to do it in this kind of position where they're leaning forward. That'd be good to get the horns in front. Oh, now I gotta do a bread monster too? You guys are throwing in all the requests just to keep me on the stream, huh? Now I'm gonna be stuck here forever. Nah, just kidding. Like I said, if I, if I don't get to your ideas, I'll write them down so that I can uh, maybe give them a, a fair shot next time. All the good ones are facing right, but I wanna do one facing left because that's what's easy for me. Extinct kangaroo. Look at that. <laughs> a quarter ton extinct kangaroo. I mean, clearly a fake drawing, but. 
All right, I guess this animal is going to be facing right, which means I'll probably screw up. Except at least they have a really nice, obvious curve to them. The tail, the back, and then the kangaroo is right there, right? <laughs> but look how big I made it again. All right, that's OK. Now we'll give it the rhino ears. They got these little like they start out as little sticks and pop up like that, right? They got big beefy heads. The ears definitely need action lines because they always got flies flying around their heads. And then they got the big whoop. 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 That's a pointy horn, but I, I'm looking at photos here. They got pretty pointy horns. Rhinos are freaking intense, man. All right. There, he's got a skinny face, and I'm going to make this one a little more cartoony because I've been... I was going hard on the uh, overly detailed insects. How about we make it a friendly kangaroo? Alright, I gotta go back to my kangaroo reference photo. For it. Alright. Getting the taper right here can be tricky. Uh, do they have kangaroo legs or rhino legs? Because I guess rhinos, yeah, they also have feet kind of like the elephant. So it would be easy enough to throw those on the bottom. Okay. I really do like the curves of a kangaroo. They, they've just got very good flowing. I don't know, aesthetic to them. And then they've got just like the most muscular legs you've ever seen. <laughs> My guy has kind of uh, weird legs here. <laughs> and a, his tail's a bit short for a kangaroo, but rhinos have short tails, right? So the fact that it's a combination can make it tricky. This is one I really should have drawn smaller. That's a little cute thing. Got a little terrifying. <laughs> what did I expect? It's not bad. It's not bad, but it's a little big. Once again, I'll go ahead and oops, ah, shade in the back leg. Let me draw a little one. He deserves to be a cute animal and not the creepy thing that he is. <laughs> and here I'll demonstrate that time and effort does not make something better necessarily. Because this guy's got a cute little face already. Look at that. Just because I'm doing it really quickly.
maybe got those hands a little weirdly proportioned. But <laughs> oh, there it goes. Man, so close. Bonk. <laughs> that is the sound of a kangaroo foot. Oh, and tapering the tail. No, no, no. <laughs> this is another one of those, huh? A lot of those today. Where they just are coming together a little bit wonky. Poof, he's jumping. <laughs> um, that's probably the best one I've done. He's got that weird skinny face again, but I actually kind of like the skinny face. And I'll do some hair shading, just some little dashes to create that short fuzz type hair. I think kangaroos have short fur. What do you guys think? <laughs> All right, Taft, if you get, if I get your approval, I'm happy. <laughs> That's pretty cute. I think it should just be called the kangaroo, though, right? Because kangaroo just looks like I started to spell kangaroo and just forgot or just don't know how to spell it. I'm going to do a kangaroo. Sorry for modifying. Kangaroo. I like it. Yeah. Ah, oh, thanks. Thanks, Magnum. All right. We'll do a quick bread monster. Wait, but why would he have bread? What are bread legs even? I'm going to do a bread monster, but I'm not going to do it the way you said. <laughs> well, it's already been done like, right? The sandwich with a mouth. That's been done. But, I don't know, just a loaf of bread. Y'all make some weird requests, but that's how I know your fans of make anything. The weirdest fans in the West. And proud of it. This guy's just gonna be a breadhead.
breadhead, a loaf oaf. Breadhead. What would what would his face be made of? Nothing. It's just one of those classic overjoyed breadhead faces. Oh, and I, I know. How about he's like holding a butter knife? Maybe he's just eating a plate full of butter because that's what bread would do, right? Let me draw his plate right here. <laughs> Who's to know that's a stick of butter, but it is. I kind of didn't have enough space there to make it more obvious. Yeah. It's not obvious, but... It's the breadhead. Everyone knows you need a knife and fork to eat a steak of butter. Sorry. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's going to be the last drawing for the day. It's been so fun. Let's zoom out and take a look at what we made today. Go ahead and start uh, typing out your one request of what you'd want so I can go ahead and tackle it in the future, perhaps. I know one small burb. I'm sorry, I took your idea and totally, <laughs> totally turned it into something else. You want a little bread insect? All right, all right, all right. With a bread insect with a bread lure, he's bread. How could bread have a bread lure? You're mad. but I'm just gonna draw a little cartoon bread lure for you. <laughs> he's like made of toast and it, he's luring people with toast. That puts him at high risk of getting eaten by whatever he's luring. <laughs> There he is. All right. Hey, it's cute. I'll give you that. Plus, the, the shape of the bread loaf gives him a little booty, which I always like. Oh, 
Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> there you go. Glad to satisfy your request. <laughs> it's definitely fun to draw little tiny monsters like that. So uh, maybe the next uh, drawing session we'll do more more doodles, but smaller ones. Although we did a few large and super cool, impressive ones, which I'm also stoked on. Love the elephant. Love the helicopter bus. The kangaroo. I think I got it pretty good there. Probably could have done with one more. I mean, I thought this guy's face was super cute. Just got a little wonky with the legs. The croctopus. Fungus fly. <laughs> Bear trade. Oh my gosh. I forgot how mad all of these are. Thumb cat. You know what? This is exactly. What I was hoping would come out of a live stream, just a lot of really weird ideas that I probably wouldn't have gotten to on my own. Not for another year or so, at least. The Hoppy Barra. Forgot about that one. <laughs> That's where the kangaroo comes back in. And the teepee monster was pretty fun. The little head crab teepee monster thing. It totally looks like a head crab. Actually, uh, now that I think about it, that's not a TP monster. The TP monster ate this guy, whoever he is. Awesome! Hey, that was so fun, guys. Thank you so much for doing the stream. Let's see. I'm going to roll through the ideas really quickly. Pangolins are popular, what I've been seeing. Pangolin rhinoceros jellyfish. I love jellyfish, too, so I'll do some jellyfish-related things. Let's see. I'm just going to write down these animals that people want to see, and not, maybe I'll combine them with my own things. Pangolins, jellies. There's the clock roach, which I really like. Whoever suggested that, I'm going to get to that one. I already did my, uh, what was it, a grasshopper? I did a brass hopper, which was kind of like a steampunk grasshopper. That's one of the first rejected animals. I think the clock roach would go right in with that one. Oh, okay. Keep leaving comments. I'll check them out. But I have to go to the bathroom again, so it's the perfect time to end the stream. Thank you so much for joining. I'll have a 3D printing video up soon. But that's it for now. So as always, thanks for joining me. Stay inspired. Stay inside. Wash those hands. And look forward to the next thing from me. Send me uh, any of the rejected animal drawings you did during this stream to the Instagram at rejected.animals. I'd love to see them. And uh, thanks again. Bye.